Right, so when the deer come through, um, I had the door behind you shut, which you'll see in just a second. So when we turned the corner and the other door, I had it open and I had all the stalls open. So whenever we come in here, I just come and I shut this door behind me, which it's gonna probably get dark. So I'm gonna leave it open. But I shut this door behind me and I had this piece of plywood and I just turned it. Okay, and I just kind of walked with it and waited and waited. And then every once in a while, there would be one or two make the turn and come back and I would just have to block them. The only bad thing about this thing was is it scraped up my knuckles because I kept hitting the sides. So my knuckles were bled, they was bleeding and everything else. So I'm gonna have to create some handles here. Eventually though, we're wanting to make a track that goes down and makes a 90 all the way through. That way I can just slide the door and go. Um, but for now, this worked pretty good. Um, no deer tried to jump over it, thank God. But I did have to block a couple and then they just turned around and went the other way. So yeah, so they, uh, this door was shut. So they just come and I mean, they turned perfect, didn't get nothing, I mean, just great. And like I said, I just had this door open and then I opened every door in here. So they have both sides to go on. And then after I shut that door, I come around and I just kind of push these doors too and you can feel them and they kind of funneled out. Sometimes I did have two in a stall, but most of the time it kind of separated them that way. Um, so now we need to go again the inside and I can show you what we learned in there. So now we're on the inside. This is what I was saying. So I would just take these doors and kind of just ease them. And you can feel the deer, and I would just keep easing until I got them into a stall or another. And we went back and we drilled these holes so you can actually see in here. Um, so you can see where the deer are at. Um, I would say the suggestion with this is, is these are too small. I wish we would have went bigger um, just because you can't really see in the areas, especially trying to put a light. So what we might end up doing is, I think I'm gonna cut a slot out and try to buy like a cloth that we can flip up um, to make it dark. Plus, in here in Kentucky, we have to have our USDA guy scan the tags. So like if they was in the stalls, he could scan them really a lot easier and be able to look at that um, easier. Because when we run them up and we went in the chute, you know, it was kind of hectic, him trying to do the scan up front, me vaccinating, um, all that stuff. So that's one thing we're gonna fix. Um, but everything else I thought were great. I mean, we could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight in here, and then you can have them on the ramp in the AI box, and then, you know, leading up. Um, so one thing we did find out too is whenever I would push them into the, the ramp box. So I would open the door and I would just push them around. And then whenever they got in the AI box, we would shut this, okay? I mean, in the ramp box. So when they got in the ramp box, I would go ahead and shut this door. But I thought it went a lot smoother if we opened both of these doors, not just so the AI box, you could open it, let them get in there, then you could close this. But to me, that was a lot calmer when we started just opening both of these doors. And they would just gradually just walk right out in here. And whenever they walked out here, then I would pop the floor and they would be in the trap and then we'd get up here and work on it. Now, this box, um, these are made to be down. So like, I would open it, you have a little slot underneath here, so you can actually see the deer coming. And when they would get in here, that's when I would hit that, I would close this, and 
and then Ira be here so we can work on them. Um, and then my son was on the other side, so we had two people. Um, as far as the deer getting out, they didn't. I mean, they swamped down in here. This is pretty deep. I didn't realize how deep it was. So really all the deer's backs were up in here. So you had plenty of room to work with them and not worry about them getting up in here. Um, as you can tell, we had some hair and a little bit of blood um, there. Um, and then the next thing would be on the video I saw, it showed when we opened this door that it would hit that lever, the door would open and the chute would open. But that's not the case on ours. I don't know if we're missing a piece, which it looks like it should be bolted here, but I had to actually physically get that, open it, and then they went out. Um, so I don't know if that's something to look at or look and see if we can find, if we lost it. Um, I don't know, but anyhow, and then what I would do is we have handles. Michelle can show you. So if I want to put deer back in the farm, I would just pull this handle down and they would walk right out of it. I was totally shocked how well that worked. Cause as soon as I opened that door and just let them out, they just walked right out. Didn't run, didn't hit walls in there or nothing. Just gradually walked out. So that was some of the stuff we learned. I really like this sheet though. I mean, it's just push that up, pull the floor up, push the lever back, bring the doors down, we're ready for the next one. So, um, pretty good. So, let us know your thoughts. You know, we uh, got some whiteboards in here. Yeah, put some whiteboards. We got our deer farm in here, we made a couple of little shelves here. Um, we got to think of wherever we want to put some other things, but. We're getting there right now. We still got trash in the middle, but um, we're gonna put a table or two there and be able to have storage. So, yep, make sure you subscribe if you haven't, like the video. If you have any thoughts, any suggestions, or any questions about how we did this, let us know. And we appreciate you watching.